Hello everyone, welcome back to the next of our ACCA P2 lecture recaps. Remember, these are a recap of the full course lectures available on our website shown below. Also on there, you can get all of our mind maps for free as a PDF. So, share-based payments, what are we talking about here? Well, remember, this is where we're talking about payments to others in return for goods or services in the form of shares or perhaps share options. So we're paying others by giving them our shares, the shares in our company. Now the key thing on this to remember is that it's in return for goods and services. So the payments have to be in return for goods and services. If there's no goods received, no services received, and you pay in shares, that'll be dealt with differently, not under IFRS 2. So IFRS 2 it is we're talking about. It's called share-based payments. And there's two main types that we're going to look at, and it is equity settled, first of all, where we settle the transaction in equity, in shares. Or, secondly, cash settled, where we settle the transaction in cash based on the share price. So, first of all, the scope of IFRS 2. We need to know that it does cover these things. It does cover share appreciation rights. So that's where employees get cash based on the appreciation of the share price. Employee share purchase plans, employee share ownership plans, also share option plans and any conditional issuance of shares. So issuing shares on various conditions. So it will cover all of those, but equally important are the things that's not covering. So the examiner will often put a few of these in as a red herring. What will it not cover? It doesn't cover business combinations. Well, we know that because we've looked at IFRS 3. So it doesn't cover business combinations unless there's a little bit of it that requires employee service. That may come under IFRS 2. But broadly speaking, business combinations, IFRS 3. Also, commodity-based derivative contracts are not covered. They'll be under the various uh, financial instrument standards. So anything that's not for sale or usage, so goods or services that you're purchasing that are not for sale or usage, they're maybe for hedging and you're not expecting to actually take delivery of the goods, that would be based under the financial instrument standards. They're not covered under IFRS 2. Why do we need this then? So two main reasons that we need this standard. We need it to re recognise that resources have been consumed so resources have been consumed in the goods or services. We need to recognise that. We also need to recognise the true consequences of share options. It's very easy for a business to issue share options to its directors, for example, rather than paying them vast amounts of money. But we need to recognise what the true consequences of that payment is. So let's look at the first one we talked about, equity settled, settling in shares. So this is payment in shares in return for goods or services. The treatment, remember, was debit expense, credit equity. What were we going to debit and credit with? Well, if it was goods, remember, we measured that at the fair value of the goods on the date received. So we debit the expense, credit the equity with the fair value of the goods on the dates received. It became a little bit more complicated when we looked at employee services. So employee services difficult to get a fair value, also may be happening over a period of time. So we had to have a calculation for that. So we started with the fair value of the, at the grant date. The fair value of what? Well, the fair value of the share price or the share option which has been granted. So the fair value at the grant date. Remember, if there's no market, you can use a valuation model to try and calculate the value of the option or the price. We also then talked about vesting. So when are the options or the shares going to be taken up? If they're taken up immediately, then recognise the full amount at the grant date. However, if they're recognised in a number of years, in each of the years you'll need to do this calculation. The number of options expected to vest, so at the end of each year you'll estimate how many of the options we expect to vest at the end of the vesting period times the fair value of the option at the grant date. Remember, in equity settled, that never changes. We don't change the fair value of the option at the grant date. 
times the proportion of the vesting period. So in year one, if it's a three year vesting period, that's one over three. Year two, two over three. Year three, three over three. So the number expected to vest times the fair value at the grant date times the proportion of the vesting period. And that gives you the full charge cumulatively. So you'll debit equity, debit the expense, sorry, credit equity with the amount in each year. Remember that we revise the, expect the expectations at each year end and the expense is based on that re-estimate. One last thing was if there are conditions, for example, meeting a certain share price, if those conditions are met early, we accelerate the recognition and recognize it all early. So we did a detailed example of equity settled in illustration one, so have a look at it if you're not sure. Cash settled, remember this is cash paid at an amount determined by the share price. So the share price goes up, you're gonna pay more cash. This time the treatment was to debit the expense and credit a liability so that at the end of the vesting period your liability would equal the amount that you were going to pay. The fair value this time would still be the share price but it's not fixed at the grant date. So we don't fix it at the grant date. What we do is revise it in each period. When it's paid then we'll have a liability that will equal the amount that's paid. So the vesting for cash settled was again the number expected to vest, only this time times the fair value at the reporting date. So at each reporting date, we'll take the fair value of the share price. Unlike in equity settled, where it was the fair value at the grant date the whole way through, we didn't change that. So everything else is the same, except we take the fair value at each reporting date. And we looked at that in illustration two. The last thing we talked about were making some changes. So if there were, for example, modifications to share options, so the, the company sees that the share option value has changed, so they make modifications to the payment plan. Well, if those modifications are changed, for example, they increase the fair value of the options, you'll recognize that change over the remaining vesting period in addition to the original fair value. So you'll do your original calculation and add in any extra fair value that is brought about by any modification. And we did that in illustration three. Lastly, if there's a cancellation or a settlement, then we shorten the vesting period. So that is our lecture 26 on share-based payments IFRS 2.